Hi everyone, it's Natalie here, um, and it is Sunday evening on September the 22nd. Um, and I've just come home from the pottery studio, which is why I'm a little like disheveled <laughs> and a little worse for the wear. And I got my, oops, wrong side, I uh, got my hole in my shirt and everything because, you know, pottery studio, right? So, you know, you go there to play in the mud. Um, but I, I wanted to share two things with you. Um, one of them is a whole big ass box of hats uh, that just came out of the kiln, which I'm really excited about. Um, and the other thing would be a uh, an autumn equinox spread. So I figured I would share my harvest and then do a tarot spread that talks about my harvest. You get what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Um, yeah, fun times. So, um, I had a whole bunch of stuff come out of the kiln that I was like really geeked about and I'm trying to figure out where to start with it. I think I'll start by showing my teensy, teensy weensy little owls. So I like to make, um, like to make little owls out of clay. So these have like little speckles on them and they're very cute and sweet. Um, I will probably have them posted. There's like a whole family of four going on right here. I'll probably post these on Instagram as well. Be bombarded by the pots. Um, <clears throat> my partner and I are preparing for a big pottery sale coming up at the end of October. So we're invited to, um, I guess it's called the Briar Patch Pottery sale and it's in a great big barn out in the countryside um, in Missouri and it's got like at least a dozen different ceramics artists and Tom and I are gonna display our stuff together so I'm really excited about that so we're like building up stock um, this is a porcelain bowl that I made um, and with its little glaze on the inside and yeah, I make them to kind of look like shells. These are fully like you can eat out of them and they are dishwasher safe. So they're pretty, but you can actually use them, which I find to be important. Uh, and not just for a candy dish. You can use it for whatever it is that you want. Um, but I like doing things that have like a nice organic shape to them. And I know it's not summer anymore, but when you live by the sea, which I don't, sadly, but when you live by the sea all times of year, you know, this is, this is totally a thing. So I'm going to go ahead and make several more of these. I've made a lot of them in the past and my sister and brother-in-law who really, really are into anything to do with water, like those a lot. And, um, I used to just make them for them, but then they told me I should make them for everybody because every time people come to their house, they're like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? So um, here's a different one, different clay body. Um, it's mixed, two different clay bodies mixed, so it's a little bit darker. This one's just porcelain, and this one's got, like, speckles in it, and, oh, there we go, light's picking it up a little bit more. Yeah, speckles, and, and anyway, so you can really kind of see the difference on the inside, because the darkness of the clay. But, yeah, I just like that shell-like feel to things. Um, and I've also got this guy who's very, who's just like the last one, um, as well. So there's those. And I just did like seven or eight, eight more, eight more of those today. So I've got a bunch of them prepared. Next and finally, I will show you the mugs that came out. So these are the water, these are also porcelain, and they're like purple on the inside. Can you tell I like purple? Purple's such a nice color. There's going to be a lot of purple tonight. Um, not just my shirt and my pots. So yeah, that's, I have four of these. Yeah, so they're all just a little different from one another, but they all work together. So shape's sometimes a little different. And so I use, um... In my artwork a lot, I use Japanese bush honeysuckle, um, which is widely regarded as an invasive species. And I'm really fascinated by that, not just because I'm interested in how an invasive species biologically takes over our ecosystem, but also because I'm really 
I'm really fascinated by the way people talk about it. So it feels to me like a lot of the passive aggression and just, well, ha, a friend of mine says there's nothing passive about being aggressive. Um, but a lot of the the way the aggression is used is in some ways covert. How about that? Um, but we'll, you know, the, when you look up invasive species online, the way that they're spoken about and written about, people will say things that are outrageous, where if you were speaking about a human being, you know, it would be, well, I used to say it would be completely unacceptable, and in this day and age, it seems like that has become acceptable again. So a lot of my artwork, which I started uh, in 2015, you know, to do with Japanese bush honeysuckle, is something I'm still working with and working on, and more from that angle, because it, unfortunately, it continues to be relevant. So instead of, like, ditching it and moving on, which is what a lot of artists would do, they would say, okay, I've really done that bit. I'm continuing to do it and revisit it and talk about it because I think it's really important. And it's a good way of starting a conversation because it's so pretty, isn't it? It's so exotic. So, yeah, there we are. But it also, you know, it does make anything botanical looks lovely on a pot. I mean, that's just the truth. So there are, yeah, like four of these. I think this is the biggest one or turned out to be the biggest one. Um, I did more with continuing designs onto the handles than I often do, and I'm really liking what I did and kind of regretting the last two that I made, because I don't think I did as much of that. And then there's this one that's so teensy, it's so little. See, that's how little it really is, do you see? There's such a difference in size. So you can see, like, these are two different ones. Anyway, porcelain really shrinks a lot when you fire it, and I always, I forget about that sometimes, so I'll throw something that I think is really big, and it it just shrinks. And then there's one of these things that's not like the others, because I used this speckled clay that I used to make the owls to do this little cup. And there's the inside. So a lot of purple in this batch. Um, I like blues and purples. I use a lot of, I'm a Sagittarius, what can I tell you? I like a lot of blues and purples, it's just my thing. Um, and I did have this one, which I'm not as pleased with, and it's showing up beautifully on camera, which is very nice, um, but in person you can see like, there's a lot of glaze unevenness. It's, it's black, black underglaze and black, um, black amber glaze on the inside and then I use this like the same blue that's in here is what's on top here. It just didn't come out evenly but it's still a pretty cup. It's still all right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna toss it in the trash over that. Um, I'm just gonna do silly accents for you and um, embarrass myself instead because that's way more fun. Okay <clears throat> so there go the pots. I'll actually just put these down here. And, <clears throat> and I'm back, and we will talk about what's on this t-shirt for Fox sake. Uh, one of my favorites, <clears throat> and it's, the rats are ruining it, but, so moving on, I would like to do a reading tonight with the Tarot of the She, which I have edged in purple. I told you there would be more purple. My dog is having a fit. I don't know who's out there or what they're doing, but he clearly thinks they shouldn't. <sighs> anyway, um, I learned in the meantime that this symbol is, um, according to Emily Carding, is uh, the symbol that is used for the she. So it's I'm really I'm really excited about working with this deck. You know, yeah, as I say, I, I went last night and I, I sat with it and edged it in purple, which felt right because there's purple like around the edges of all of the pictures. And um, if you look at the back, you know, you can see it kind of pick up Oops, that purple here in the in the back of the card. So it felt right. And I'm really glad I did it. So this um, spread, which I will put a link to below. Um, it is a 
It is the Autumn Equinox Tarot Spread, and it's by the Mer Princess. Um, and I'd never heard of her site, but I'm ever so glad I found it. She did her version of this one with um, La Corte de Taroki, which is another one of my favorite decks, um, which I should work with more. I don't use it nearly enough. Um, okay, so the first question is, what is my harvest? Oh, you're back and you brought your shark. Noah just came back in the room. Did you, did you tell those guys off? Okay, so what is my harvest? And she says in parenthesis, celebrate this. <laughs> so, I haven't had a chance to do much reading with these yet because they just arrived on Friday. I don't think, I didn't open them until yesterday morning maybe? I'm going to go ahead and just draw a card. Oh, wow. So I got the chariot. And I'm not entirely sure quite how to interpret that. Maybe I could say, because I tend to think of the chariot as being successful at uniting, you know, what's dark and what's light in order to direct the chariot appropriately um, and move forward. Actually, that's really, oh, yeah, that's definitely, that feels spot on. That feels spot on. I've done a tremendous amount of that. And I've also done a lot of releasing of really dark, really heavy things in my life recently. Um, a lot of cord cutting, a lot of really necessary um, individuation away from family of origin. Um, and I've managed to do it in a way that was not harmful to anyone. So like I didn't have to like cut anyone off or stop speaking to anybody or say anything like hateful or cruel. Um, it was really definitely in the way I would have wanted that to happen. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a definite harvest. Wow. So I really could spend more time celebrating that. It's been, like when I talk about things have been kind of like I've lifted back up and felt a lot better. That's a big part of it. And I also feel more free right now than I have for maybe, maybe ever. You know, just to pursue what it is that I want and what I love and what I feel called towards. So, um, really working, working more spiritually and working more with, um, with, well, with with people. You know, on on a very humanitarian level. Um, so that's a really, yay! <laughs> that's a nice thing to harvest. Okay, so that's our first one. Okay, the second one, how can I best spend this autumn season? Ooh, that one jumped. Okay. Oh, wow. So I got Dreamer 2, Half Moon Truce. So that's a Two of Swords. Wow, that's so interesting when you look at it. So there's more... Is that in order? There we go. Um, I think that comes out in order for you guys. I think it does, yes. Um... Look at that. So dark and light of the chariot and then the two with the moon. Um, 
And Emily Carding says, like, don't read the book. Rely on your own, own intuition. Don't you look. So I'm going to not do that if I don't have to. And I'm going to say, um, I don't know. I'm going to, I might have to, I'm going to have to ruminate on that a little further. I would say maybe that's about like spending more time with those you know, oh, I don't know. Pausing and bringing the dark and light together a lot more, a lot more um, evenly and just pausing and holding that in, holding the space for that. So maybe pausing and holding more space for both the dark and the light. Um, Looking at those two mountain peaks, there's a resting, right? So if that bird is there in between those two, I'm just going to look it up. What the hell? I don't know this deck very well yet, and I want to learn more. Um, interesting. Okay, so Dreamer 2. Now the mind is split in twain. The glorious whole is seen to wane, and two thoughts now must find a path to bring both peace and conquer wrath. Okay, so I'm not too far off here. That's about right. Um, keywords, division, polarity, truce, temporary balance, decision, or stalemate. Um, so how can I best spend this autumn season? I would say uh, finding a truce, temporary balance, um, Two thoughts must find a path to bring both peace and conquer wrath. I'm good with that. Yeah. I'm good with conquering wrath with peace. <laughs> so probably like bringing greater peace to my mind. I wonder if this deck is going to admonish me for not meditating enough, just like the New Earth deck does. <laughs> I told my best friend when I went to go visit her a few weeks ago, I said, you have to look at this deck, you know, it's, um, it's just like going to see our favorite teacher, Haju, who will, you know, chastise us and love us all at the same time for not meditating enough, and then sit down and meditate with us, and then look at us with the most beautiful expression of love, so, um, just like a really beautiful, perfect parent, you know, okay, so next one. How can I best close off this year? Boy, that's a good question because I, I've done a lot this year, but boy, am I just as happy to say goodbye to 2019 as I was to 2018, frankly. Um, but things have taken a very different turn in the last few weeks and in a really wonderful way. Um, that's as much energetic and psychological as it is physical and literal and okay so all right deck how can I best close off this year oh there we wow that one came flying out Okay, so Dancer 7, Illusion's Depths. I'm going to have to get a little bit more clarity on this one. So we're looking at the Seven of Cups, but in Fey or She language. So how... Can I best close off this year um, through depravity, through more sex, through swimming, uh, Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna say so. I'm just being I'm just being silly and throwing out ideas because sometimes that gets the the get those things out of the way and then suddenly the mind can clear, right? Say what's right there. Say what's there and then move forward, right? Um, 
Okay, so continuing along this same thread, which I can see starting to run through this this reading, I'm going to say that it's um, getting beyond illusion, like going to the very depths of understanding what the illusions are, how they act on me, um, and diving as deep as I possibly can, which is my plan, actually. I've already got some tools lined up for beginning to do that. Um, and, and working through some stuff just to kind of clear those illusions and move forward. So that's how I can best close off this year. That makes sense because then I can really start fresh, um, you know, moving, you know, with a, with a new energy, let's say, after my birthday, which is the 13th of December. Um, and I, I'll read the book later. I know, I'm pretty sure that that's where we're coming from there, but yeah. Wow, so deep. So then, how can I find more balance in my life? Boy, I could, I need a whole reading about just doing that. <laughs> I really do. Four streams of income and two businesses and... Ugh. I don't quite feel ready to unite all the business stuff yet because I feel like I need to... Oh, hello. Oh, an another one wanted... Two more wanted to jump out. You guys have to stay in. I'm, I'm just going to take the one that flew out. Um, so was a, how can I find more balance in my life? And the answer is root and blossom. Maker nine. So that's an earth... Yeah, I'm going to say that's an earth card, root and blossom. Wow. That what a beautiful message. Wow. I have goosebumps creeping up all over. So, yeah, finding more literally like put my roots down into the ground even more than I have and just let let everything that I've been working on and growing blossom and create more fruit and that will create more balance that's really affirming because sometimes I feel like I need to change what I'm doing um and uh, yeah this just says like no you're doing what you're you need to do just keep doing that do that do what you're doing it's working yay oh my gosh I'm so happy I decided to do this one okay and then Um, finally, what can I find if I descend in the dark and look inward? My favorite thing. <laughs> this one came jumping out. Uh, emergence, Maker 8. Emergence, wow. Oh my gosh, what a powerful message and deck. Holy crap. Um, yeah, look at this. So, wow. It's not just emergence in terms of, because this is obviously the suit that's earth-based, um, but it's allowing the energy of the earth and the energy of the sun and of the plane that we're living on to... Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What can I find if I descend in the dark and look inward? Wow. That's interesting because that comes back to the harvest, right? So the harvest was the chariot duel, right? And then we have um, the, this was how can I best spend my autumn season, right? Half moon truce. And this is kind of also being between worlds. I mean, it's a very shamanic idea. And really that's, the more and more I study what I'll call neo-shamanism, um, I should make a video about that at some point. I really should, and just talk about my journey with that and why I've had such aversion to that word um, and what I'm doing to move past it in order to just function, right? Um, but yeah, this walking between two worlds and allowing 
allowing that's an emerging from that I mean that's very much what I feel drawn to do <sighs> yeah and not just to do it you know it's not just in the dream realm right this it's in the real realm you know it's not just it's do it here so that it comes out and can be real here very powerful spread wow very very powerful oh my gosh all right folks I'll put a link to this in the in the um, in the box below so that if you want to go and have a look at this spread for yourself you can um, and again I was just working with the tarot of the she which is a by Emily Carding and it is a very very affordable deck if you get it on Amazon Obviously, if you can afford it and buy it, and any any local store has it, I've never seen it in any of my local stores at all. But excuse me, supposing that you do, you know, ta-da! I I would really go for it if this is in any way, you know, the kind of work and the kind of deck that you're drawn to. Because um, I understand, like working working with that realm is not necessarily what everybody wants or feels safe with. Uh, and certainly I have not always felt safe with it myself. I've had some really, uh, well, that's again, another, another time I need to do that paranormal 11 question thing. <laughs> Maybe I'll light candles in here and do it later, except that I really should be getting on with doing some work that I'm supposed to do for my class because I'm teaching this writing class. It's one of my, one of my, um, multiple streams that's going through right now and it's a lifesaver because I had a little setback yesterday so anyway thank you so much everybody for sharing this journey I wish everyone the most beautiful autumn equinox and know that I I am fully harvesting tons of love um, that I'm really excited to share with all of you so it's it's such a gift and such a blessing to be in this kind of place to be able to do that so have a beautiful week and a beautiful equinox. Try balancing an egg if you've never done it before and let me know about it. Okay, bye.